All right. So yeah, uh, I'll be talking about Drugshot. Uh, so Drugshot is um, an appiter and actually its own standalone web application that uh, allows users to query biomedical terms of interest to receive a list of uh, prioritized small molecules related to the query term. And sort of how this is done uh, briefly is these query terms are sent to the PubMed API, um, where we retrieve a list of PubMed IDs associated with the query term. And uh, Drugshot then compares these PubMed IDs to um, previously uh, generated files of drug to PubMed ID associations and um, looks at the co-mentions and then outputs a list of uh, prioritized associated uh, small molecules. And so then using the top, uh, let's say hits from this associated list of small molecules, uh, drug shots able to further predict uh, additional compounds based on literature uh, co-mentions and signature uh, L1000 gene expression signature similarity. Uh, and I'll sort of discuss that in a subsequent slide. Uh, but before I uh, proceed, uh, I think it's necessary to uh, mention Apiters and the Apiter uh, Software Development Kit, or SDK, that uh, Anna had actually touched upon in her presentation. Uh, and so the Apiter SDK uh, allows basically for the conversion of Jupyter Notebooks into uh, their own standalone data-driven web applications called Apiters. And when the Apiter SDK is injected into a Jupyter Notebook, uh, this allows developers to build these modular reproducible uh, workflows for various bioinformatics workflows uh, that can be dockerized and hosted on the web uh, for the community to use, or they can simply be uh, packaged and run locally. Uh, so as an example here, we have a screenshot of the bulk RNA sequencing uh, analysis apiter uh, created by Minji uh, Jion in the lab. And so users can upload their metadata uh, gene count files and tweak various parameters uh, in an input form that when submitted, uh, it generates and executes a uh, Jupyter Notebook in the cloud uh, with the analysis of your data. And uh, so Drugshot is also available as an Apiter um, in the Apiter catalog among many other uh, Apiters that we've been developing uh, for the community. And I believe there's, it hosts like over 90 uh, distinct apiters. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so there are actually two underlying uh, databases that provide uh, drug shot with drug to PubMed ID associations. Uh, these are termed drug riff and auto riff. Uh, and so for both of, uh, for the creation of both these databases, we needed to compile uh, a master list of drugs and small molecules to uh, actually associate with PubMed IDs. And these were compiled from uh, two existing lab resources, that being the uh, side effect uh, prediction portal L1000 and uh, drug monism, which is a drug set enrichment analysis portal. And um, <clears throat> so drug riff uh, briefly was just created by querying uh, this master list using the PubChem API, which actually has an endpoint for cross references uh, between PubChem compounds and PubMed IDs. Uh, and then for autoref, we resolved each of the compounds to a uh, mesh term, a medical uh, subject heading term, and then queried these uh, mesh terms uh, using the PubMed API uh, to find PubMed IDs of abstracts that contain these mesh terms. Um, and so Drugref can sort of be thought of as a more curated resource uh, of drug to PubMed ID associations where the provenance of each entity can be traced back to PubChem, whereas Autoref is a more complete resource, albeit it might be more prone to errors uh, because it sort of relies on fuzzier uh, string matching um, to get the associations. Uh, and just for clarity here, I want to show um, the basic workflow for how the drug shot search is conducted. Uh, so you, in the first step, you choose a query term uh, that's submitted to the PubMed API uh, to retrieve PubMed IDs for the given term. Uh, the PubMed IDs from this search are compared with uh, our already known drug to PubMed ID associations from Drugref or Autoref, uh, depending on what the user selects as their background database. And step three is uh, producing a 
table of drugs and small molecules uh, associated with the query term, uh, which are ranked by the number of overlapping PubMed IDs between the term and the drug. Uh, and so just to give a visual of what this might look like here, we have a, an example table from querying the term uh, lung cancer, which is the default example in the APITER. And the first column uh, is the shared publications between the query term and the drug. And in the second column, we have um, a normalized fraction of publications, which is sort of like a ratio of publications where the term and the drug are co-mentioned uh, out of all of the literature that mentions just the drug itself. So like, for example, for gefitinib here, we have um, a metric of like 0 0.5, uh, which is out of all the literature that we have in drug or for auto earth, uh, half of them mentioned gefitinib with lung cancer. So this is like another potentially useful metric for gauging how relevant a term is to the drug. Uh, and then for the predictions in the subsequent steps, uh, we need a reference set of uh, relevant small molecules. And uh, we create this just by uh, simply just ranking the small molecules uh, by the product of the two columns and then uh, treating that as an unweighted uh, drug set for the predictions. And so, uh, as I mentioned before, there are uh, these uh, similarity matrices that we use to make these predictions. Uh, and there are two types, uh, the first of which is the literature conventions matrices, uh, which are created from Drugriff and Autoriff uh, that contain uh, pairwise counts of shared PubMed IDs uh, between all small molecules in Drugriff or Autoriff respectively. And then we also have the signature similarity matrix, uh, which contains pairwise cosine similarity of drug-induced L1000 gene expression signatures um, for thousands of uh, approved and uh, preclinical uh, and experimental small molecules. And so the top predicted compounds uh, from any of these prediction matrices are simply ranked by the largest uh, mean similarity with the unweighted drug set. So I mentioned that drug shot is available as an apiter, uh, but there's also a standalone uh, web application that uh, I'll give a brief demo of. So here's the PubMed query page, which is also the homepage for DrugShot. And the search bar allows you to input terms to search for, terms not to include in the search, and um, also selecting between drug riff and auto riff. So once uh, we have the results, uh, we can look at the uh, drugs and the distribution of the small molecules. You can mouse over them uh, on the scatter plot. And then at the bottom left is a table of drugs associated with the search term, uh, ranked by the number of overlapping publications. And in this case, the top 20 drugs are used uh, for the predictions, which are displayed in the right table. And these tables can be downloaded and submitted for uh, drug set enrichment analysis as well uh, to get a better idea of what they might have uh, in common. And then here we also have a drug set augmentation features feature where users can submit their own unweighted drug sets uh, to predict related compounds uh, from a matrix of choice. And on the left, again, you have your input compounds and on the right is a uh, table of the predicted compounds from the similarity matrix, in this case, L1000 signature similarity. And again, those uh, tables are downloadable and can be uh, enriched. Uh, and so we have these uh, similarity matrices uh, for making these predictions, but they have to be benchmarked to see if they actually, um, whether the predictions they're making are meaningful. Um, and so the general procedure, uh, just for clarity, is outlined here to get a sense of how we did this. Uh, so uh, we first index the prediction matrix with the unweighted drug set. Uh, the columns uh, of the matrix represent just every other drug in the prediction matrix. And so mean similarities computed down each column. And these columns are sorted by uh, largest mean similarity scores. Uh, so thereby we're ranking the top most similar drugs to the unweighted drug set. And um, now we can graph a uh, rock curve where uh, you could sort of think of it as partitioning the y-axis with uh, 
size them in the unweighted drug set, which are like our true positives. And then the ax axis is partitioned by uh, all drugs in the matrix. And a higher uh, area under the rock curve uh, indicates that drugs from the unweighted drug set uh, were ranked highly uh, in the prediction matrix. Uh, and so we benchmarked these uh, prediction matrices using this procedure. Um, and we did this for um, thousands of drug-related terms. Uh, these included uh, side effects and indication terms from CIDR, uh, mechanisms of action from Drug Repurposing Hub, and then also uh, gene ontology, uh, biological processes that are known to be perturbed by small molecules. And so for each query term, uh, we calculated the uh, ROC score to assess the ability of drug shot to rank the small molecules from the unweighted drug set highly uh, in each of the prediction matrices. And unsurprisingly, uh, in A and B, we have um, the literature co-mentions matrices, which performed um, well with median ROCs between uh, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. Um, oftentimes, the predictions from these matrices are sort of uh, like a rehash of the literature. Um, so these are drugs or small molecules that may be known to be associated uh, with the term, but may not have made like the cutoff to be uh, in the unweighted drug set. And then uh, in C, we have the signature similarity matrix. Um, we see the median uh, ROC uh, values fall between the 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 range. And while this matrix uh, may seem to perform comparatively uh, worse, uh, this doesn't really make the predictions less valid. Um, many of the small molecules in uh, the signature similarity matrix uh, are ones that are experimental and preclinical compounds uh, who are, or which are not like super well characterized. Uh, so we may have opportunities to um, predict and prioritize un uh, these uncharacterized small molecules for experimental validation. And this leads me to a case study uh, that we performed where we predicted uh, atherosclerosis associated compounds with drug shot. And so atherosclerosis is a common disease, I'm sure everybody's heard of, where uh, cholesterol plaques uh, accumulate in the inner walls of major arteries, uh, which ultimately leads to uh, blockage and can eventually lead to stroke or heart attacks. And so the table on the left uh, shows the top 10 uh, small molecules predicted to be associated with atherosclerosis based on their uh, similarity in the gene expression space to uh, known treatments of atherosclerosis, like uh, statins uh, and fibrates and other such therapeutics. And then on the right, uh, we have a rock curve that's um, output by the drug shot apeter, uh, which again, just quantifies how well the known drugs were uh, ranked in the prediction matrix. Uh, and here we have a area under the rock curve of 0 0.75, uh, which gives us some confidence that the predicted compounds will be uh, highly related to the known compounds. And at the bottom, I've also attached a link to the Apeter notebook, uh, since every execution uh, of an Apeter is stored as a persistent uh, Apeter instance, um, and of which like the link can be shared uh, with others so they can see your analysis. And I've highlighted uh, two of the drugs here, uh, BMS536924, which is a competitive and selective uh, insulin-like growth factor receptor kinase and uh, insulin receptor inhibitor, as well as uh, the second drug, uh, TG101348, which is a JAK2 kinase inhibitor. And uh, these are both commercially available drugs. Uh, and we're currently... Uh, working with uh, collaborators at NYU, Dr. Uh, Gianarelli and Amadori, um, who will validate these two compounds as potential treatments for atherosclerosis. And their idea is to test uh, the drug's effects on foam cells and uh, primary human macrophages uh, by measuring interleukin beta release and caspase-1 activity. And uh, interleukin-1 beta is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, um, and caspase-1 is a protease that is involved with uh, activating interleukin-1. And it's been previously shown that um, interleukin-1-beta inhibition 
uh, may reduce cardiovascular events in patients. So we uh, eagerly await the results from that. Uh, but that about sums it up. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the lab members that helped uh, bring this project to life, especially those uh, highlighted. And uh, yeah, I'll take any questions now, I guess.